Hey everybody, what's up? And welcome back to the yard garden area hoop house. Um, this is yet another one of those videos where I record the audio while I'm sitting in my car. So I'm sorry if you hear any other background ambient noises like police vehicles and my heater that's on because it is seriously cold. Today we're going to be taking a look inside of the hoop house. I know a lot of people were interested to see what's going on in there. Um, it's about mid-January now and uh, there's definitely stuff growing in here and so far we haven't really lost anything that we planted so that's really exciting too. Uh, if you're new to the channel there's a video of me building this hoop house that was quite the ordeal building this thing but overall it's so far it seems to be doing its job and it seems to be worth it so hopefully uh, you know, things will keep going well and in the right direction. I will say, knock on wood, so far we haven't had those intense cold temperatures. We've dropped down to the teens a couple times, but that's really about it. Otherwise, it's been pretty warm and wet and rainy here where I am. I'm in zone 6B7 if you're new here and you didn't know that. Uh, so taking a look around the things that are going on in this hoop house in January... All the hardy annual flowers are doing really well. The scabiosa are still alive. Um, nice, getting some nice size actually. Just a little bit of slow growth from them. Nothing crazy. Also have some of the love in the mist that I transplanted in here. And they're looking a little bit rough. Um, some plants just transplant better than others. Uh, you know, things like scabiosa, they transplant well because the actual seedlings are big and robust and hardy and they can handle it um, but things like love and a mist they're just so the foliage is so dainty and delicate i find it it's just it's hard to transplant them i think in the future i will definitely actually use the soil blocker or maybe even a cell tray for love and a mist because they are just so delicate they can't really handle being separated in the trays you know the kind of reckless seedling separating that I do here on my channel. Um, they're harder to handle. They're just so tiny. They grow so slowly. Uh, but nevertheless, I do have some Love in the Mist seedlings, Nigella seedlings here in the hoop house. You can see I've planted them in clumps because they're just so difficult. They're so small and I don't know. I'm going to have to change the way I sow those seeds in the future. That's definitely something I'm going to have to kind of brainstorm and take into consideration. Other things in the hoop house, we have our English daisies are doing extremely well. We also have some pansies and some Johnny jump ups. I know for a fact here in my growing zone, pansies and Johnny jump ups do not need protection from the hoop house. Uh, this was more of a case of I had some left over in my seed tree and I was like, what am I going to do with all these Johnny jump ups and pansies? I know, I'll just stick them in some little nooks and crannies in the hoop house. That's what happened there, being honest. Also have some anemones in here growing really well. You remember I started the anemones uh, back in the end of October, maybe, if I'm guessing off the top of my head. Um, I didn't have as many anemones this year. I only bought, I think, maybe 50 bulbs of those 50. I still didn't really have that great of a rate of them growing. I had a couple rot, but we still have enough anemones that they are going to be truly beautiful in the spring once these start to bloom, which I am really, really excited about getting some new growth on those. Also have some carnations and dianthus in here. You'll remember I talked about the carnation germination. Carnation germination. Anyway, uh, they germinated really well. I transplanted them into huge clumps. Not the best idea. Maybe I'll separate those later. Um, this year is kind of just an experiment with carnations in the hoop house, so I'm giving it my best. Also, calendula is doing really well. Uh, this If this overwinters, this will be the first time I've overwintered calendula successfully. I've tried two years before and had it die both years, but I didn't try in a hoop house, so this is the first time in the hoop house. It'll be interesting to see how those do and what those look like, which I'm really excited for. 
Um, other things going on in the hoop house, the Godeshia or farewell to spring Clarkia. It's kind of like a wildflower. Uh, it's still alive and putting on new growth. I just love the pinks and the different colors of this stuff. I think it is so pretty that it is not even funny. Um, other stuff in the hoop house. Uh, the Fever Few is doing great. Again, Fever Few is another one that here in my zone, it is very cold tolerant and it does not need a hoop house. But as the hoop house stands right now, basically this big hoop house takes up the entirety of my backyard. So since this thing takes up my entire backyard, I didn't have any other space to plant anything else. So pretty much any plants that I had went into the hoop house. So technically the fever few doesn't need this, but it's getting it anyway. So hooray, a fever few in the hoop house. It's going to do great. Um, I'm really excited to see how these bloom. Sweet peas are also coming up down the center aisle. I just direct sowed that seed and we're starting to see some little seedlings sprout up here in January. Like I said, it's been nice and warm in this hoop house. Uh, so I wasn't too worried about their germination. I also have a few bachelor's buttons in here. Again, another super cold tolerant plant that probably doesn't need a hoop house. Actually, I know for a fact it doesn't need a hoop house where I live. But it's in there anyway. Uh, taking a look at some of the other stuff. We have some Canterbury Bells in here. Another, another biennial that doesn't need a hoop house. But, I mean, I'm starting to sound like a broken record. There were so many things that did need a hoop house, though. So I couldn't just not put up a hoop house. I wish I had more space. I would put these outside, but it's whatever. Um, Snapdragons are looking pretty well. They're getting a little bit of size. I think I've never been successful with Snapdragons. I think it's because they, they stay small for so long, and I have trouble keeping them weed-free. And it seems like they always get overcome with weeds, or the warm weather gets here too soon. I am just so frustrated by growing Snapdragons. I wish I could do a better job of that. Hopefully this year they'll grow and bloom. The stalks also look really nice. Uh, they're putting on some nice dark green growth here in the hoop house, which is good to see. They've gotten a little bit taller. These plants are already bigger than the ones that I've winter sowed in the past. So I know uh, maybe overwintering them is going to be my best bet for success. The Icelandic poppies are also looking really good. I will be the first one to admit I was really, really worried about the Icelandic poppies. Um, when I first transplanted them, they looked like they were having the worst time. I was really worried about these things. I thought for sure that I was going to lose them. And here they are, um, first week of January, and they are putting on new growth like crazy. They are absolutely loving the weather right now. It's been a little bit warm. We're in the 40s, uh, low 50s for the highs some days. Uh, usually the lows are about 32, 30 uh, with the weather right now. It's a little bit warmer than usual, which is really nice. And the Icelandic poppies really seem to be responding. Last but not least in this video, of course, are my ranunculus flowers. Um, you'll remember I planted about 100 ranunculus corms uh, back at the end of October, maybe the beginning of November. I'm not really quite sure. I did get a late start on those. Uh, a lot of those did begin to grow, had good success with them, and transplanted them into the hoop house. Uh, as you can see, I've got my little ranunculus patch here, and I feel like they are doing pretty darn good. I'm happy to see that. There's a little bit of yellowing around the leaves that can either be from, you know, where I transplanted them or it can either be, maybe they did get a little bit of cold damage one night. Uh, th that yellowing around the leaves, it's not a big deal. It could also be the soil's too wet because this area, the hoop house, does not drain very well. So there's really a lot of factors. Hopefully, uh, none of these factors will influence whether or not uh, the plants continue to grow and we get some really nice ranunculus blooms. Ranunculus are still one of my all-time favorite flowers. No question about that. I just really, really love them. Uh, that's really about it for this video. I'd love to hear any questions or comments down below that you have about the hoop house or about what I'm growing or anything like that. I'd be happy to try to answer them. Uh, hopefully this video was somehow helpful. I'm not quite sure if it was. Uh, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. I'd absolutely 
love to have you here. I make all kinds of different videos. It might be like, you know, soap making. It might be gardening. It might be like cooking something with stuff I got out of the garden. It really could be just about anything. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, I hope you all are having such an amazing day, and I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys.